no time to paint. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, usually on this channel, I'm teaching you how to paint and draw, but that is of no use to you if you can't find any time to do any painting. And believe me, I have been there and I am still there a lot of the time. So I am queen of taking too much on. I also like my house to be really neat and tidy. So there's always the distraction of housework. Now I know what it's like as well to be constantly interrupted. I started my career being a single parent with my daughter constantly interrupting me. I've had partners and friends who constantly interrupt me, who come around, who don't understand that I'm working, who don't understand that I need that painting time and bless them all because they're lovely people and I love hanging out with them. So it's doubly temptation for me because I just want to go down the coffee shop with my friends. So I'm gonna give you some real strategies in this video. Now, if you've ever had people say to you, well, you know, just, um, just settle the kids in front of the television, Tell your husband just to leave you alone for a couple of hours. What I would say to that is how's that working out for you because I'm guessing not very well. So I'm going to give you actual strategies here that will get you back some painting time. So let's get started. Now the first strategy I have for you today is a simple one and it's one that I've used myself time and time again and that's to book yourself into a class. Now it's not always possible in pandemic times to book into a real life class and hopefully it will be again soon but you can also book into things like live Zoom classes with certain artists. I don't do them myself, I'm terrified of going live but there are always classes that you can book into and I strongly advise you to do this if you're not finding time to paint. If you can book into sort of a long-term course, I used to book into course with this guy that taught me to paint and they were sort of six week courses you know every Tuesday morning and I would go along for two hours and it really really got me painting it didn't matter how busy the week was you know I turned up for those classes because not only I wanted to go but also I paid for them now if you can book into something you've paid for I don't know if you're anything like me you know once I've paid for something I'm getting value for money I'm not going to just skip out if I've already paid for it Another thing is you don't want to let perhaps the tutor down, maybe you've arranged to go with a friend and you don't want to let them down either. So there's a lot of motivation once you book a class around making sure that you get to that class. Now, several years ago, I was teaching a workshop at Gainsborough's House Museum, which is the childhood home of Thomas Gainsborough, the artist in my old hometown of Sudbury. And I was chatting to the receptionist, it was lunchtime, and she was talking about a free printmaking course that they were running at the house because there's a print workshop there, which I also use sometimes. The course was free, it was a taster course, and yet she was taking deposits from people. And I said, why are you taking deposits for a free course? And she said, oh, well, when they come in, we give them the deposit back. She said, we've learned over the years that if we don't take a deposit, people don't show up. So if you can book a course or a class, particularly one that you're paying for, or that you're going with a friend or a relative or someone else, so somebody's expecting you to be there as well, it's a big, big motivation, and it really gets you out of that can't find time to paint phase. And this is something that I absolutely do myself, because if any professional artist tells you that they've learned everything, they don't need to learn anything else, they're absolutely lying. Now I, for instance, know almost nothing about oil painting. I could book a course, couldn't I? I could go and learn with somebody who knows much more than me about oil painting. I could book in, I could pay. And you know what, once I'd paid that money, I'd be damn sure I turned up every single lesson. At this point, if you're finding this video useful and getting some value from it, can I just ask you please to click the like button, to click that thumbs up. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. So if you click like, subscribe, share, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people and my channel will continue to grow. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. And the next tip I have for you for finding more time to paint is to make sure that you schedule things in your diary and that you don't overwrite them. So I talked in the last tip about booking a class, booking a course. Now I've been teaching courses and classes for years. I've been teaching regular weekly classes and I can tell you that some of my students They'll pay for a whole term of lessons and only turn up to half of them. And the mistake that they tend to make is that they, although they write it in their diary, they see it as not a fixed thing. So I had a lady once come into one of my Saturday classes and she said to me, I won't be there next Saturday because um, my son is returning to university on Sunday and I have to help him pack. This guy was 24 and this is not even the day that he was going back to uni on, so you know but putting something in your diary and making sure that you stick to it is a really, really good way of making sure it happens. Now, of course, stuff happens to all of us. If you, for instance, break your ankle or if your cat gets sick and they have to go to the vets, of course, you're gonna skip that appointment. But what I'm saying is other than those real emergencies that we all have to deal with from time to time, but not that often, other than those things, just write these things in your diary and make sure that you attend. Now, if you can't afford classes and courses, a good thing to do is to make an appointment to paint with a friend. 
Perhaps one day a week you go to her house and then the following week she comes to your house. Make an event of it. This is a two hour slot that you two are going to paint together every week. Get some biscuits in, get some tea in. We love the tea here in England and make sure that you make a little bit of a weekly event of it and book that thing into your diary. So scheduling things into your diary makes sure that they happen. And once something is scheduled into your diary, apart from those very real emergencies that we all get from time to time, make sure you turn up. For instance, I'm filming today at 5 p.m. I'm gonna stop filming, I'm gonna stop working no matter what stage I'm at with my work, however urgent things are, however much I need to get on with stuff. I am going to go upstairs, I'm going to get changed into my martial arts uniform, I'm going to drive about 20 minutes up the road and then I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening, first of all, I'm gonna be helping out teach the kids class, kids kung fu class, then I'm going to be taking part in the adults training class and then I'm going to be doing Tai Chi. I am going to keep that appointment at 5 p.m. I will be stopping work. It does not matter if I haven't had time to eat dinner. It doesn't matter if I'm tired, if I feel headachey, if I don't feel like going. I know that once I get there, I'm gonna have a great time and it's gonna be really good for my training. So get out of this habit of putting things in your diary and then just treating them as if they're movable. Another reason students have given me for not turning up to art classes is that they had somebody, perhaps a relative, maybe a sister, come to stay for a week. Well, you've got two options there. One thing is you can ask your tutor or your friend who does art if you can bring your sister along. Why not include your relative in that experience? Or perhaps, you know, they just want a break from you. And if someone's staying in your house for an entire week, I mean, if I'm staying in someone's house for a week, I'm not gonna mind if they go off to an art class for two hours out of that week. In fact, I'm probably gonna feel a little bit relieved because it's quite stressful having to be with other people 24 hours a day, isn't it? So this is my second strategy for you, is to book your art times and your art appointments into your diary and absolutely stick to them, except for cases of real emergency. Now you can just schedule your own time to paint. You can say to yourself, I'm gonna do this on Wednesday at this time and book it in. But I know from my own experience, if it's just you on your own, it can be quite hard to stick to that. It's so easy, isn't it, just to get waylaid with other things. So I do advise you to try and make these appointments in your diary whereby something different happens, whereby you go and paint with a friend or perhaps you just go and paint outside of the house or perhaps there's an art club that you can join for almost no money. So make sure that you've got these things scheduled into your week and that you stick to them. Unless the cat gets sick, of course, cats always come first and you should take the cat to the vets instead of doing your painting. Now let's deal now with interruptions. Now interruptions can be a really big problem when you're trying to paint and it's something that has driven me mad over the years. So we're going to talk about two types of interruption. We're gonna talk about interruptions from within the house, your own family, your own family sabotaging your efforts to get some painting done. And then we're gonna talk about interruptions from outside of the house, people coming round, people emailing, people telephoning. So let's talk first about interruptions from within your own household. Now, just telling your wife, your partner, your husband, your kids to leave you alone, your dog is not going to work. If they are inclined to interrupt you and they have been doing it for years, they are going to carry on. It's just gonna cause arguments. So there are only two things you can do really. And the first one is to get out of the house. Now, I've known people that just go to the end of their garden and sit in some kind of trailer or caravan that they have static there all year round that they travel with perhaps in the summer and that is stored. So if you can just divorce yourself and get yourself to an outbuilding or something like that, then that will be better. Of course, if the weather's warm, you can paint outside. Go off to your local park, your local beauty spot and set up your painting stuff. Even going down the end of the garden may be enough to divorce yourself a little bit from your family for a short period of time so that you get some peace and quiet. You can also go to a cafe if you're using a dry media, if you just want to get some sketching done, you know, it's better than nothing, isn't it? You can go and sit yourself in a cafe or perhaps you have access to another building. Maybe you have a friend that works during the day who wouldn't mind you going around a sort of house sitting, looking after their pets perhaps while you get some painting done. So that's your first strategy is to physically get yourself away from your family as far as possible, just for a little bit of time, just to give yourself time to paint for a couple of hours. The other thing you can do is to try and paint while they are sleeping and this can actually work quite well so if you're an early morning person if you like getting up really really early consider getting up an hour earlier and doing a little bit of painting in the morning now me personally i don't want to have a conversation with another person before 8 a.m and by 8 a.m i really mean 10 a.m i am not a morning person i frequently am not even 
dressed until mid-morning and then you'll quite often find me working till midnight. I've always been that way, I'm just a night owl. So when my daughter was young, it was very easy for me to paint in the evenings. Of course, things may not be ideal, the light may not be ideal. The same with the morning, it may not be the ideal time for you to paint, but getting some painting and drawing done and keeping up your practice is really more important. And these things don't last forever. Partners' jobs change, children grow up and leave home, dogs get a little bit older and stop bothering you as much. You know, everything changes in life and it may just be that for this moment in your life, you need to either get up before the other people in your family and do some artwork or go to bed a little bit later than them and get some stuff done late at night. So let's talk about interruptions from outside of the household. This is things like phone notifications, emails, and literally people knocking on your door. Now, unless you have a very important delivery that you're awaiting, there is no rule in life that says you have to answer your door. And if you can manage to tuck yourself away somewhere that's away from the front door and people don't actually know your home, you know, don't feel guilty. You do not have to go to your front door every time someone knocks on it. And I have learned the hard way. I have had watercolor washes ruined. And when I get to the front door, it's just some guy trying to sell me something or somebody giving out religious pamphlets. You do not have to open your front door and I suggest unless you've got something you're specifically waiting for, some kind of delivery, don't answer the door. Now this is something that's actually discussed an awful lot on freelancers forums. So I'm in a few business groups on Facebook. People like graphic designers, website designers, artists, illustrators, we all tend to work from home and we all have issues with people not understanding that we are working and just coming around regardless. And although I love to see my friends, it can be really, really tricky. So another thing that you can do if you have answered your phone door and it's one of your mates and they just want you to go out, they're just popping around for, you know, just to see how you are. I know it sounds awful, but don't invite them in. Just be really, really nice and tell them how pleased you are to see them and how you'd love to catch up at another time, but you're right in the middle of something. As soon as you invite that person in, have a cup of tea, next thing you know, you're going for a two hour walk and then they're staying for dinner and your painting time has gone. Please do not feel guilty and obliged to spend time with people who didn't tell you they were going to pop round in the first place. So although I have lots of friends, I love seeing my friends, I try and make sure that these things are scheduled and that I know when they're going to come round. And if I pop round to see someone, and I sometimes do, you know, I might be passing someone's house, if I pop round and they're busy, that's absolutely fine. You know, it's to be expected. They didn't know I was coming round. So don't feel obliged to answer your door and always invite people in and always get waylaid. The same with telephones, uh, particularly with landlines. I don't even bother having a landline anymore. I nearly always regretted answering it. You do not have to answer the telephone. And as far as emails go, what I suggest you do is clear them once a day and then don't look at them again. You know, I'm the worst person to give this advice. I will sometimes look at my emails again in the evening, but that's just really during relaxation time, clear my messages, and then I set my time aside for work. So interruptions from outside of the house, this is something that you have total control of. You cannot control your kids disturbing you, your husband or wife getting on your nerves and constantly coming in to talk to you when you're trying to paint, but you can control what goes on outside of your house to some extent. Now, of course, things like noise are an issue. If any of you have watched my channel for some time, you'll know the trouble that I had in the last house with the neighbors using strimmers and things while I was trying to film. And it can just be invasive when you're trying to work generally all of that noise going on. I mean, I've had times when I've set time aside to paint and then I find that the neighbor's car alarm's gone off for two hours. You just have to write those things off and say, you know, beyond my control. But I would say that about 80% of interruptions that you get from outside of the house can absolutely be controlled. If you're in the middle of a really, really important wash on your watercolor painting, don't put your paintbrush down just because the phone rings. They'll phone back or get an answer phone and you don't have to answer the door if you're not expecting anybody to come round to your house. So let's talk now about chores, about housework, about house maintenance, about all of those things that you need to get done in the day to keep your household running. They can become really, really overwhelming. I hate trying to paint when I know that I've got a big pile of ironing, for instance. So something I discovered years ago when reading a time management book was the rotation method. Now I've adjusted this a little bit to be suitable for painting because with the rotation method, it was done on a time slot. So you had little time slots to do certain things. Now this isn't really possible with a painting because of course, if you're in the middle of a sky or a large wash, you can't just put your paintbrush down because a buzzer has gone off and you've done 10 minutes painting, so that's not going to work. However, if you use the rotation method in a task-based way, then it can really, really be useful. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, let me give you a practical explanation of how it works. Now, imagine I have lots of tasks to do around the house. They're all quite short tasks. You know, perhaps I need to empty the dishwasher. I need to set up a load of washing for the next day. I need to iron three things. I need to empty my dustbins because it's bin day tomorrow. So I've got all of these household tasks that need doing. 
Then I've got a backlog of emails. I've got about 60 emails sat in my inbox. They've all got to be gone through and filed or deleted or done whatever. Most of them won't be important, but I need to go through them and make sure that I don't miss anything important. Added to that, I've got a huge pile of shredding in my shredding tray. I haven't done any shredding for months, so that all needs to be done too. And then, of course, I want to do some painting. So what do I do? I divide this into small bursts of time so that I use the rotation system. Now, as we've said, working to a set amount of time doesn't always work with the painting. So what you can do is set yourself a task within the painting. For instance, I'm going to paint the sky. I'm going to put the shadows in the clouds. Now this can work particularly well with watercolour because we often need to let things dry. Now I admit this method isn't suitable for everybody, but there are some real advantages to it. And one of the main advantages is that you don't get bored. That's what it's designed to do. So if you have to sit down and deal with 60 emails, you're going to be working quite quickly at first, but then after a while, boredom's gonna set in. Before you know it, you're watching cat videos on Twitter. So the rotation method stops you getting bored. It actually means that you get things done much more effectively. For instance, I may have two hours of household chores. I don't want to do them. It's going to be really, really boring. But what if I break them down into individual things? Now, it only takes five minutes to give the bathroom a quick clean. But, but if I've got that two hours of chores stretching ahead of me, chances are I won't be very quick at doing it. So you divide your tasks up and you rotate them through the day. So let's look at the things that I had to do and the painting that I wanted to get done. Now, I can only do a small batch of shredding before my shredder basket needs emptying. So let's put on that rotation schedule one batch of shredding. So not all of the shredding, just one batch of shredding and empty the basket. And then let's put on that rotation schedule, clear five emails. Half of them are gonna be spam anyway, so that won't take me a minute. And then let's put on the rotation schedule, one household task. How long does it take to iron three items? Not very long. And then the fourth item on your rotation list is your painting. And for your first task, what you're gonna do is get all your things ready to paint. That only takes five minutes too. Then you're back at the beginning of the rotation. So you do another batch of shredding. You answer another five emails and you empty the dishwasher. Then you do your initial painting sketch and you go back to the beginning again. And in that way, you don't feel that there's all this guilt building up, that the household chores are just pressing on you all the time. You're not getting any painting done. And you also don't have that soul destroying misery where you've just spent all day running around doing household chores and you haven't got any painting done. So although it's not a strategy for every day, it's only a strategy that I use when I've really, really got a backlog of so many things. I feel overwhelmed by them. Do give it a try. It's really, really worked well for me. I still use it today. I don't use it every day because sometimes it's important to focus on a painting or a task for a longer period of time. But if you find that you've got this backlog of chores and you just can't get any painting done, try the rotation method. Now the next technique that I have that will help you find more time to paint is to have all your equipment set out and ready to go. Now before you get annoyed with me, I'm fully aware that not everybody has a studio space or even a table space. But if it is at all possible that you could set up an area, I've seen some really creative things done actually. If you go on Pinterest, you can see where they have these kind of wardrobes and they open the doors and all of their stuff in there, you know, their art equipment, their sewing equipment, everything is set up and ready to go. I actually like to do sewing as a hobby and I have a little sewing table set up in the lounge so everything's ready to go. If you possibly can, find yourself a space within the house to work from. And before you think that there isn't room or that you can't do this, ask yourself, are the other people in your house or getting priority over you? You know, perhaps your husband has a double garage to tinker about in maybe your kids have a games room where's your space do try to make space in your home to have a little art table set up even if it's the size of a coffee table or a card table just somewhere small that you can set up that's ready to work now if that absolutely is not possible for you then I want you to have everything that's ready to go so I want you to have a little fold up table and if you have a look on that shelf over there you can't see it very clearly but I've got one of those boxes like it's like a little um it was bought for art but it's like a little toolbox and you open it up and all your paintings stuff is in there. I still keep my paintbrushes and things there today because it's helpful for taking to things like art classes. So even if you can't set up a physical space in your home, make sure that all your art materials are ready, that they're organised. Another thing that I've seen utilised by some of my students are these sort of open carry toolboxes. I don't know what they're called, but plumbers have them. They, uh, they don't have a lid. They're almost like a large basket with a sturdy handle. And I've seen some of my students, especially those that do crafts, have everything stuffed in those and so they're all ready to go. So this is my next tip for you, is to make sure that your materials are easily accessible because you can waste half of your time getting ready to paint. If you already don't have much time to paint, it's gonna be so helpful for you to have everything ready. And it also enables you, if you've got something like a little box like that, it enables you to leave the house whenever you have the opportunity and find yourself a space somewhere else where you can paint without interruptions. 
do let me know in the comments which of these tips you found most helpful and of course do feel free to share your own tips so we can all learn together. Now if you enjoyed this video I have another video that I made a little while ago that's all about the things that professional artists do that amateur artists don't. I think you're going to find it really really insightful and interesting. You can watch that video right now.